Welcome everyone. Hopefully this is going out. Um, yeah, it's on public. Everything's going good. Um, hopefully the chat is going. Haven't fixed as yet the issue with um, why it doesn't pop up on the screen normally so I'm having to capture the window. Other means. Thank you, Niels, for um, working that one out and let me know all those weeks ago. So I need to sort that one out. Hope everyone is well. So um, what we're going to do, we're going to wait for a few people to jump on uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of talking about or what the subject matter is for today. I know it says sort of slicing and bits and pieces in the original uh, post is just because of the fact that the uh, gentleman in question came in to um, fix that. Uh, it's, but this is far more than just slicing, it's over curvature. So it doesn't matter if you have an over curvature in a hook or a slice, you are sacrificing distance. And so this, uh, we're going to be talking about different things and um, we're going to be obviously picking on this gentleman because <laughs> we are talking about um, uh, he was suffered from a slice, so it's trying to, and this is so, so common. Yeah, of course, there are people that overhook the golf ball. Absolutely, and we're going to be talking about that as well. But for the generalized pattern of people curving the golf ball too much, it has to be high right, too much loft, that kind of idea. Especially with driver, not so much with their sand wedges because of something called D-plane, of which I will chat about if we, if we are not going to um, send people over the edge too much when it comes to them falling asleep. Now, um, let's get back on to here. Now I can see the everything is working how it should, um, flicking through. There we go. Uh, right, so what I do need to do, um, absolutely, is I need to uh, put the same capture I've got for my um, chat into my other screen because I do want to do some work if I can do a little bit on there so you can see what I'm um, talking about at least um, I don't know if I'll be able to I'll just I'll just add it that's probably the easiest way is just to add it while I am doing everything um, here so just go right chat there we go and then we'll go click and then we'll go pop out there we go Ah, see, easy as that. Now you can't see that. Well, I'll tell you what, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll flick it over so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm moving chats across. There you go. Um, but my whole pattern of everything doing the is right, getting it all in here so everyone can see what everyone else is saying. Of course, if you want to, you can zoom in and stuff like that. So uh, my plan going forward anyway, is to, um, when we'll be we talking about launch monitor, bits and pieces go for a lesson most of the good lessons nowadays are done in environments where you can use launch mine it doesn't have to be done in an indoor environment it can be done in an outdoor environment as well as long as you're using technology such as trackman is an amazing thing outdoors quad you can use outdoors just as well but there are certain advantages to trackman um, when it comes to ball fitting there's one. Um, and when it comes to indoors, you will not beat that little piece of kit there. That is a little wonder. And when it comes to the balance of everything, outdoors, depending on what you are looking for, um, potentially a uh, track man will give you, it gives you certain measurements, it gives you certain um, uh, parameters that you don't necessarily get with quad effectively wind so if you're talking about i mean obviously quad has got barometrics and you can program wind into it but you can't do that um in a realistic environment because obviously wind gusts and stuff like that so um there are advantages track man when it comes to outdoor indoors yeah right so let us go have a look and see who is about we've got nails on already good evening hope you're well <laughs> And Min Lee, good evening. Hello, Min, I hope you're well, well. And when it comes to face to path is a subject, I guess. Kinda, it is, um, but it's, there's many different ways to muck something up. Um, and the interesting thing I had with this guy is he obviously sliced, cut, over curved everything. However, the fix what he did with his irons, his seven iron saying question, was different to the one that we did with his driver especially and even his three wood. Um, 
And what will be interesting going forward is where that transition finishes, where the iron fix kind of bleeds out into needing the wood fix. Um, he'll find that out in practice and stuff like that, but um, yeah. I am, I'm looking forward to that side of things. All right, so um, get on the chat, guys, to make sure just, I mean, I'm sure everyone can hear me as normal. Um, Mark, hello, Mark, hope you are well. Good evening. So um, we'll just have a chat about what he did. So I tell you what, no, what I will do, I'll flick over. There we go. So, oh my word, I'm getting old. I'm feeling it as I'm getting older. Uh, so you can catch me on both cameras anyway. Um, this one will probably be the, as in that one, not that one down the line, you'll see down the line, but yeah, you've got the front view camera. Um, so when it comes to um, the initial findings, he was, uh, there we go, just grab a golf club, doesn't matter what it is. When we done it on uh, high speed footage, now, okay, first of all, um, he hit some shots. And the classic thing for him, he was swinging slightly across, he was stinging over there, but he was hitting those kind of shots out to the right. I mean, that's an exaggerated version, that's fairly out to the right. Why is that not coming up on the screen? I've just noticed that. Um, it needs to update. You can catch it in your windows up there, but it won't work if it's not um, updating on that. So I need to do a little bit of worky worky on that one, because it's still saying shot one, which is about as much use uh, as a chocolate teapot. So I'll flick over back over there and see if I can quickly uh, make this thing work. Um, window capture. Let's see if we can get that working. But yeah, worst case scenario, if we can't get it working, it is not the end of the world. Uh, yeah, that's me. As great as I am, <laughs> I'd rather have me in there. Right, let's go FSX Play. Let's see if this works. Hopefully this will work. We'll go back again. Now, I have got the camera. There we go, it shows it up on the screen there. Now, I have got my camera, um, obviously there, but I've got a TV, as you can see, up in front of me on the other screen. So I can still read your comments, should you uh, write anything. Um, it's not as big as I would like it, but there you go. Right, so, um, yeah, so effectively he was hitting shots like that. Now he was coming over much more to the left. Uh, event he was coming in doing sort of like, he was aiming fairly straight and he would come through and he would do that as a good one, as best as he can. As in the case of path is going seven across, you'll be able to probably see down the bottom there. I'll make those tiles bigger so you can see it. If I make those tiles bigger, there you go. Well, don't need that many tiles. There we go. So you can see the tiles now on the bottom screen. Seven across, two open, little fadey kind of shot. That's about as good as he can do. The problem is because he was using his wrist angles in a way that he was increasing loft, he was hitting a lot of those. Face staying too open, and then you go from hitting a half okay shot to something which goes not very far. You'll be able to see on the bottom of the screen now. Ready, there it goes. Uh, eight across, 15 open. Uh, what's the loft on that? 37 degrees, that's a lot. That is a lot. Now, when we looked at high speed footage, we saw his wrist angles working in a different way. So where you're looking at wrist angles working in with a slight shaft lean, shall we say, a little bit of a positive lean to the shaft, not like this or anything. Um, and when it comes, I won't bore everyone with talking about the six axis when we're talking about supination, pronation, flexion, extension, all that lot. Radiant old and deviation. Um, what he was doing to cut, let's just say, if you imagine I've got my glove on my left hand, I haven't got my glove on my left hand, but just in case I did. The camera in front of me, if the, you can see on your top right hand side of the screen, um, if we look at that on high speed footage, as you come through, all I could see was loads and loads and loads of white when it comes to his glove. You could see his glove was, he was coming through with his face so open. <laughs> That's the reason why he was doing it. Of course, he was swinging across left to try and get the ball going left, but then effectively, you know, guys, face, when it comes to it, face trumps a lot. That's interesting, the old, um, well, you can just see there, the uh, chat's disappeared. 
I'll have to have a look at that one. Doesn't matter. Keep talking underneath, come on, leave in your chats, and I will get that to there when I finish doing this thing. So we had to introduce a different fix to his iron swing because when it comes to his wood swing, he was doing something a little bit different. Um, we fixed this one by trying to get him to try and handshake on the way through to make sure you could get to a point where you handshake. He was coming through and like that. And so we were trying to get him to marry because if you imagine, if we was coming through this way like that, if you were to turn to the Gulf, go like at 90 degrees and go back down again, face is massively open. If you're talking to try and get your hands like this, as in you're getting to a point where you're trying to handshake through, yeah, that kind of idea. Oh, it looks like the internet may have popped back on when it comes. It may, or it may not. Let's get back on. As you can see, we've got the white screen of doom when it comes to the chat in the box. Now, let's go and see if we can get the um, window capture. What's that one? Um, yep, yeah, just doesn't like it for some reason. So they will go back over there and then see if we can restore the chat and then pop it back out again. Because we are talking about different bits and pieces on there. Pop out chat. Okay, and we have a few. So let's go back over. Hopefully that has, yes, it has. Cool. Right, let's just elongate the box a little bit so it makes up a bit more of the screen. I'm doing that in real time, look at that, see? Crazy. Let's go have a little chat and say hello to everybody. Uh, Mark says, happy birthday, if I ever remembered correctly. You have, it is my birthday today. And uh, yes, I am working, I am streaming on my birthday. Um, well, 24-7 golf is 365. Um, but Mr. Mumble has donated. Thank you very kindly, Mr. Mumble. A $5 donation. That is wonderful. Birthday gifts. Very kind. Very, very kind. Uh, Neil says, so age guessing contest. Let's get on. 38 today. Okay, so that's going to be a good one. We did say that last week. And that's the plan. The plan for you is to guess my age. Um, Mr. Mumble says, uh, happy day, happy birthday, definitely. A YouTube drink on me. Well, um, yep, there you go. That's about as much as I'm allowed to show. I have a YTD, um, but yeah. So at the moment, Niels has guessed 38. Um, so <laughs> be honest, or don't just be kind. That's not the whole idea, just to be kind. No, just be honest. What do you think? Go on, chat down there, get in the chat. I don't know if some people obviously who watch live, I think on TV, um, which is a bit scary considering you've got TVs now, like 85 inches or so. Imagine my head <laughs> on an 85 inch screen. Um, right, so yeah, 38 is what we have at the moment. Time for a YTD. Oh, still things going wrong with this chat. I've been busy today, unfortunately, when it comes to being busy. Um, Min Lee, 42. Happy 42nd birthday. So we've got Min Lee on 42. We've got Niels on 38. And <laughs> Rogelio has just said, HBD, happy birthday. Thank you very, very kindly. So, um, right, Rogelio, write down in the comments. Mark has got 36. We've got a 36, a 38, and a 42. Um, come on, keep going. Uh, whoever's the kindest, no, I won't do that. But yeah, keep putting it down there. Uh, don't let the gray, yeah, happens at different ages. <laughs> right, so um, we, now we've got this working. Let's see if we can transition back over to this one. Oh, is it still working? Yeah, it's working now. Don't know why that decided wanting to have a little bit of a Fruit Loop moment, but it did. Um, right, yeah, so we fixed his 7-iron because when we looked at this camera, so that one, the one that you can see me down the line. Excuse me, YouTube Windy Pops. Um, with, I'm not a great fan. I don't really care too much. I'll talk to you in this one. I don't really care too much when it comes to the backswing and the takeaway and stuff like that. And yes, there is a point that there is on certain people, there is a pattern of you change their takeaway, you change how they take the golf club away. 
that influences a lot of other things, right? So I'm not saying, when I'm gonna say what I'm about to say, I'm not saying this is for everybody, I'm just saying that for the instance of this individual, it doesn't. Now, he did bring the golf club a little bit from the inside, so from that down the camera there, so rather than hands being here, his head was back. So the hands path, head path, there was a, um, and not a synchronization, shall we say. And so when he gets to the top, there was a little bit, it was a little bit laid off. And the first thing he wanted to do was then come across hands, head path, completely different. Now, obviously I would like to try and see if I can do a little bit of unification when it comes to the understanding of head path and hand path. As soon as you start getting the head path in a different pattern, you can know different. If you go getting your head path massively from the inside, you can hit some screaming lovely draws, hooks, and also pushes out to the never never. Um, and no different when you get your hand path going that way, you can hit some lovely pulls, pull hooks, really bad ones. Some cuts, some slices, the lot. So when we try and get our hand path and head path a little bit more in line, we are going to be a little bit more or path orientated very much so, a bit more neutral, and have a chance at neutralizing our curvature. Now, I'm not saying that you guys out there, what you should try and do is hit straight shots all day long. That's not the whole idea. Um, some of the best players in the world have always had a shot shape. So I hit a fairly straight shot, but it doesn't mean, you know, that's the whole idea. If you play a, a fade, if you play a draw, I don't care, as long as it's not a hook, and as long as it's not a, screaming slice because you can if you play what was the last shot i hit there slightly healy um it was yeah eight across 15 open so aiming fairly straight and then doing some weird and wonderful shots so there's a nice weird and wonderful shot that's a lovely weird and wonderful shot i mean look how far that's going that's 88.6 miles an hour that's got 135 yards carry uh, no, 132.6, <laughs> there you go, 132.6. So slightly healy, slightly low, but very, very small. But look, nine across, 13 open, and you're wasting all of that 88.62 miles an hour, and it's gone 132 yards. That is ridiculously short for 88 miles an hour. Now, that's 83.7 miles an hour, yeah, just a demonstration of. Um, got a fraction left, not too far, four yards, not a problem. Um, club path, 0.3, face the path, 0.6, so zero, zero, so fairly, yeah, boring. Um, strike was fairly good, 1.2 mil low, zero. Nought point naught, lovely, on the horizontal. And it's gone 153 yards carry from a club head speed, five miles an hour uh, slower. <laughs> so we've gained, what was the other one, 132 yards? We've gained 20 yards in the air from a five mile an hour slower swing because we have control over club path, uh, face to path. But more importantly, there's this little thing down the bottom here. Third one from the right hand side at the top. It's called impact loft or dynamic loft. The first one, I haven't got a clue how much it was, but it was 30 something odd degrees. That one there was 28.6 degrees. So we are reducing loft. It's yeah, the importance of trying to take curvature off and hit the golf ball further for every single little ounce of effort you put in. Um, so when it comes to doing that, well, yeah, we had to get the gentleman thinking on the way through, yeah, rather than doing the classic thing where I saw all of his glove. I mean, it was ridiculous how much his face was open coming across this way. Um, we got the feeling of the handshake, getting to the right, the, the right hand, the trail arm, for a, obviously for a right-hander, getting to a point where you could shake someone's hand. Now before he couldn't, because he was having his hands like this leaving his face open, obviously exit massively left. So trying to shake hands with someone in right in front of the screen, yeah, rather than being over here, um, gave some rotation to his wrist. Now, I'm not a great fan of teaching someone to flip their hands. No, absolutely not. But what I'm trying to do in that session there when it comes to his irons is reintroduce an idea because he doesn't start with his hands massively open. He adds that in, in transition. He has this want to, to do this on the way down. So when we start talking about how we do that, we, we looked at just his wrist angles rotating over. 
That made a massive difference to what he does in transition up here. Rather than going across this way and wanting to obviously, yeah, steepen the old shaft angle, um, he wanted to then, by doing that, for some reason, because he knew he had to shake hands with someone out in front of him, not to the left, out in front of him to the screen, he then did what we needed him to do. And the, we got everything done that we wanted to under the one thing in his irons, just literally shaking hands with someone out in front of you, in front of the screen target bound. Um, that was hugely important and he got a load from that one. Um, and then we're going to talk about the wood in a second day. Um, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. Um, we're back to the chat. Happy birthday, have a cake next time you pass a bakery. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the weight off. Neil, thank you very kindly though. Um, it's that's a very, I'm trying to keep the weight off. Um, so we've got 36, we've got 42. We have a, uh, was it 38? Yeah, we've got 38. So we've got a few different guesses. Uh, and I won't say what the real one is until the person hits it. <laughs> there you go, we'll do that. So, um, Write down in the comments, obviously get on the comments, go on, get down there. Um, does anyone else suffer from too much curvature? Now, what I was just talking about on there was just purely just talking about how we got the desired effects from the uh, individual in question to try and get his hands moving a much more from uh, leaving your face open by your hands being in this position by getting him feeling his hands are rotating over. Now, of course, we are not wanting him to flip his hands. What we are effectively trying to do is take that want to put it in to start with out. Um, and when we got that, Rather, he's not now not through looking at high speed uh, camera, he's now not adding it in this much and then putting it in to um, like rectify the problem. He's now not opened his hand. So he's now, because he's thinking that he's got to do this on the way through, he's changing subconsciously, he's changing how he gets it up into transition and he transitions into, because if you look at his backswing, his backswing is fine. There's no issues whatsoever with his adding of weird wrist angles on the way back. It's all what he does in transition. So give them that idea, changes everything. Makes a big, big, then with all he, effectively, all I've done is given him one thought. That's it. And it's the byproduct of such. And that's the best thing when it comes to stumbling on something when it comes to coaching. Is the best coaches in the world will give you as much change as possible using the least amount of words. So if I could miraculously change your golf swing to be one of the most efficient swings in the world and all I had to tell you was to think about trifle, um, I would constantly, everyone, every time, just think a trifle, just think a trifle and it works. Now, you don't have to think about a thousand different wrist angles and what your face has to do here. No, you don't have to do that. That's, that's just, you, and you especially can't play like that. That'd be like mind boggling. It really would be crazy. So, um, you know, the whole idea is you give them a wrist, you give them a, a thought, a feeling, a, a something they can chew on. Um, and then you're doing it on, this is where experience comes in, but you're doing it under the understanding that when you give this instruction to someone, as a byproduct of such, commonly, other people do this. And that's the whole idea. We'll talk about the wood fix in a second, because obviously when we talk about driver off a tee, distinctly different. And it also happened with three wood as well. So we utilized a little bit of a fix on that. So let's go back over to the chat, Aru. Um, once a year, you can afford a cake. <laughs> Now, when um, I've noticed, so when I was in my teens, in my 20s, I could literally eat what I want. Um, since going the wrong side of the 20 number, as in as soon as you go 29 to 30, you have to be a little bit more conscious of what calories go in because not as many calories seem to go out. Um, but yeah, uh, Min uh, says, out in swing with hook problem. Any suggestions? Uh, yes, okay. Min Lee, sorry, into out swing with hook. Any suggestions? Yes. Um, so 
I, I would like me, I would love to see your wrist angles for that one. Uh, I'd love to have you on camera so I can actually um, see wrist angles. So, um, Rogelio, how does one combat a case of the pull draws? Um, pushes mid round, could not adjust and had horrible score. All right, pull draws are interesting. Pull draws are very interesting. So, pull draws, um, effectively, you can get the. Okay, so pull draws, people think of pull draws in, in different ways. And so, because of depending on where you strike it, so we, if, if you go by the nine ball flight laws, yeah, and you can find them on Google and all that lot, there's always a way of, of, of a perfect strike. Ball will do this, it's called a pull draw if you do this, 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 or it's called a, well, it doesn't matter, there's, they're on there and you can have a look. However, where you strike the golf ball, and with obviously twists that go in the head when you strike it poorly, you can create pull draws, for instance, um, with not the absolute one of the nine that you're doing. So what we'll do, Min, we will have a look first of all at um, your question when it comes to in to out swing with a hook. Any suggestions? Um, yes. So let's go flick back over. Uh, do, 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 transition, there we go. So when you look at individuals, uh, there was, oh, there's so many different reasons. So Min, I am, what I'm saying here, this is not a fix for you because I haven't seen your swing. And if I, unless I can see your swing, I can't necessarily then be able to say straight away, absolutely, that you need to fix this. So let's just imagine you're aiming straight. Yeah, so obviously if you're aiming massively out to the right and swinging, you could even swing slightly across the line as such, but still be producing a path from the inside if you're aiming sufficiently out to the right. Um, grip, first of all, I mean, again, we haven't seen your swing, but let's do a bit of a checklist. If you've got your grip in a somewhat neutral, now remember, when it comes to everybody out there, we are talking about what is neutral. Years ago, we had obviously th thumbs down grips and stuff like that. As years have gone on, uh, tuition has changed to a point of where we don't now see neutral as that. We do understand a little bit that uh, the neutral grip has got a touch stronger. Now, what I mean by strong is I don't mean you grip it tighter. All I mean is the fact that the hands are rotated a little bit in a way um, where your thumbs aren't down. So the top hand is rotated away from target a little bit, so rotated with your thumb going away to the trail side. And then no different when it comes to the right hand or lower hand or trail side, um, lower hand when it comes to rotating your hands or your thumb away from target, that kind of idea. So it's strengthened up a touch. So that from a point of view, if you can see on the camera, um, that would be like uber weak, yeah? Same on that one. That would be uber strong, sort of like this kind of idea. That's where the old baseball kind of idea, like the old, like that. Um, and then nowadays, neutral is kind of, with a straight club face, is kind of more like, like that, rather than being kind of like, you know, back in the day, anyway. But this is based on what's now. Now, Biomechanically, we are all different. So if you imagine how my shoulders, some people are a bit more this way, some people are a bit more rounded when it comes to their shoulders. I'm someone who's a bit more rounded when it comes to the gym. I skip back day too many times uh, when I used to go to the gym. So my, my hands are rotate, because my shoulders rotate this way, my hands are a bit more rotated this way, yeah? And because of that, my grip starts, especially with my left hand. I am left-handed, but I play golf right-handed. Um, my dominant hand being left, I grip with a slightly stronger left hand. So if I can get it in there, there you go, so slightly stronger, ooh, pulsing on the focus, left hand. I am not like this, I'm not like that, I am more there, so I'm slightly stronger in my left hand. And then on the right hand side, I'm slightly weaker than what my left would be if I was to marry it up is because I use my right just to temper my left hand side. And so as long as your grip isn't ridiculous, so as long as you're again like massively strong, which will want to rotate the face over, obviously, yeah, causing hooks anyway, grip done. 
again, that is very much so subjective to you. When it comes to the main parts and thing, let's go get up into, so that camera there, the down the line camera, we don't want to see the swing go too rounded here, yeah? With your, with your um, like massively kind of getting to a point where there's a massive difference or difference between hand path, head path, so in transition, yeah, we want to get to a certain point, which is fine, but we don't want to start getting this going on. As soon as you start getting this going on in your transition, where your head path goes massively behind your hand path, you're in a position here where you're stuck, and all you can do is release through. You'd end up sort of like hitting shots right over there. What do we get? 28 foot degrees from the inside, I just saw that. Um, so you can see, when you get your hand stuck, you've got no other way other than absolutely jamming it. 28, I mean, that's an extreme, and I wasn't anywhere near the ball. I just stretched for that one, but you can kind of get the idea. When you get your hands this far back, you are going to be releasing into the golf ball massively from the inside. Now, remember, obviously, target isn't in line with your path, if that's what you're doing. So your brain is going, but target's over there. But tar tar target's over here, look. Target's not over here, target's over here. So your brain, after a certain period of time, goes, that's not gonna work. And so we get a little bit anxious when it comes to the wrist angles getting rid, and then you end up starting to get sort of kind of shots which, like, hook. <laughs> so seven from the inside, five um, close. That, for me, I have to put effort into that. <laughs> I have to feel a lot of effort into that because it's difficult for me to do. Um, I did a decent job of doing it, but it takes effort. Now, if you've got a path seven from the inside, seven's a perfect number because you can imagine. Seven from the inside. If that seven from the inside then has a face which is zero, you've then got a seven degree push straight out to the right. What If something happens like your face is open, Wow, that thing starts right, goes right, and then of course you can get the oh, you can get the hooks from that as well because all you've got to do is get your uh, with a slightly too strong a grip. I mean, if I did that with a slightly too strong a grip, that five, which is still over curving, that's still eight yards uh, missing target uh, to the left. But if you have a strong grip or have not got very good face control, that thing could be landing 30, well, 40 yards left. And again, remember, it's exactly the same thing. If you have unwanted curvature, I mean, that's got, how does it say, tilt axis on there? Yeah, spin axis. Um, on the bottom row, four from the left-hand side. Tilt axis, spin axis, same thing. Um, you're looking to not have an excessive tilt axis. If you are having an excessive tilt axis, then that is gonna be taking, robbing you of distance. No different if it's going one way or the other. Now, especially, you see it much more in driver if you have a tilt axis to the left or right, which is gonna be penal. Yes, you see that more um, because left's loft. Um, and with this, when I've got 34 degrees of static and I've got obviously 29 degrees delivered, um, you are going to get a little bit more bang for your buck when it comes to distance out of a draw, overdraw, than you would do the overcut. Um, and then it kind of marries out completely when it goes to driver, when you, they, they're like for like, terrible thing to have um but yeah so when it comes there's that's the the basic cause of it you're getting to a point of where you're getting your club so far behind trying to release it and obviously you're over releasing it and stuff like that now <laughs> as i said when i was at the uh computer that's bearing in mind you are thinking about striking it out the middle now i was six mil low three mil toe 3.4 mil toe on that one um so fairly decent considering that is not my normal swing um now if you start hitting shots where you're thinking pull draws i mean if that face was another five degrees closed than it was that's starting either slightly left of target and really disappearing left the classic pull, there it goes, off it goes, draw. Um, if you do the same thing, I don't know if I can do it. I don't, I, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure I can do this, because this is gonna be difficult for me to do all three things in one go. Nope, I don't think I got it. What I'm trying to do is strike. I'm trying to add in all those weird and wonderful things in my swing, so I'm trying to get my hand path back here over rotate the face and hit it out the heel 
<laughs> which is not the easiest thing to do. Just to basically showcase what happens when you get one thing like massively wrong. So if I try and get my path going out there, but hit it out of the heel. Oh. There you go, that, that did not too bad a job. Don't hit the line. No, nope, missed it. Um, face was slightly overclosed, I'll be honest. 8.3 from the inside, face is still slightly closed and I did get out the heel, not enough. Again, I'm worried about this. The, the part of the golf club which will not be named, the hosel rocket. Um, but if you do that and you get face twist, obviously face twist is gonna make that golf ball look further left to start with. And then obviously with the um, curvature you've got anyway, turns out into something which you really don't want. So again, unfortunately, Min, I'm, I apologize for the fact that I cannot be a little bit more specific, but unfortunately I need much more specific information to be specific, but hopefully that's given you an overview of the potential problems that you have. Right, I'm just looking at my, hopefully I'm, I'm up there, there we go. Right, are we up when it comes to um, all the comments? Let's go, can I get all the comments on here? Can I get the comments on here? There we go, I can. Excuse me. Um, great help, it explains a lot, many thanks. No problem in. I try, it's very difficult obviously when you haven't got the information that you need, but there you go. Right, um, how does one combat a case of Paul Jaws? Okay, that's that one, um, cannot adjust. So, that's the same kind of thing, isn't it? In to out swing with a hook, um, case of pull draws and pushes mid round Rogelio, that whole thing and Min, um, they, they basically, with all the information I've just popped in there, that does both of them. Um, because again, I need more information, especially uh, Rogelio, I do. Um, understanding what your normal dynamics would be great. Um, again, you can have pull draws and pushes Pushes, I mean, par from the inside. Yep, so you, it's very, very difficult to do other things if you haven't got um, par from the inside and get those two. Um, but you can obviously have an overclosed face when it comes to the pull draws with the par from the inside. And then the push would be par from the inside, but your face does not release. Now, that could scream grip. Um, so you can get in a balanced and um, neutral grip for you. And so you're not having to work the face because there shouldn't have to be an aggressive release or anything in uh, the golf swing. Uh, release should just happen naturally as all the angles start to release out of the golf ball. Um, that you shouldn't have to have a thought in your head of release, 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 or whatever it would be, because you can't time that every single time. It's different when you're trying to put in a swing thought. If you're trying to change your golf swing in a way where um, there's a requirement to do this or a requirement to do that, yeah, then feel an exaggeration all the time, because obviously that's what you, we need your brain to understand which muscles it needs to move. Um, but yeah, if you're trying to think about loads and loads of things during the swing, good luck on that one. It's gonna be quite difficult <laughs> to say the least. Uh, right. Now, any other questions quickly? We haven't, we've got some, um, we're still trying to guess my, or how old I am. Um, today's my birthday. Thank you very much so for everyone's uh, birthday wishes at the moment uh, and so far. And <laughs> thank you very much for the kind donations as well. It is very kind. Um, happy birthday, Jay. <laughs> so we have 36, we have 42, we have 38. And have we got any other ones after that? No, I don't think we have. So anyone who's watching now who can get on the chat, because I know there's a lot of people who watch on, on certain platforms that you haven't got access to chat, be it on TV. TV's one. Obviously, you haven't got a keyboard attached to the TV and asking someone with a remote control to type in or something, if that can even be done, I don't know. But it's difficult, uh, difficult so yeah. Right, should we start chatting about the wood fix, shall we? Yes, we'll do the wood fix. Um, right, now, um, should I actually hit shots? Now, I haven't hit shots for a while, so um, I've got to try and make sure I do not do my back in. Because <laughs> I have always said this, and I will continue to always say this, make sure always that you warm up first. Because <laughs> if not, as you get older, um, things can start going twang, when that's not good. That's not good whatsoever. So, um, should we go to the driver? Let's go to the driver. Um, oh, 
let's just grab not that one actually i'm not grabbing that one because um i might have to do a flick over on the what's it called uh where am i there i am if i flick over on here at least you'll be able to see me a bit better there we go um steve's in the house hi jay happy birthday 43 all right <laughs> thanks for the um thanks for the guess um and what we got you can see my butt actually tell you what i'm just gonna i'm still at the computer there you go just because i was just caught uh Rogelio, um have been working on grip change usually strong yeah felt swing too flat going to have some range work uh don hi don hi jay good to see you again good to, well not see you don obviously i can't see you don but it's good to um read your messages thank you for popping on um so we have a new guest we have a 43 in the house oh i tell you what i'll do i'll have a ytd whilst i'm out of shot well my butt's still in shot golf at golf addict we've gone 45 now um right here we go got on this camera 45 um you're not right uh so well, let's go get a driver because he did this with driver um i'm out of camera i think because i'm just trying to get a driver there we go all right back um right so when it comes to it i won't i won't hit anything here no i won't definitely won't um Right, so when it comes to the iron, obviously we had that fix of his hands were, when it comes to the high-speed camera uh, in front, we were getting to a point of where his head on his iron was massively open. Obviously he was swinging across and stuff like that, but because his hands were not releasing, so we got the feeling of shaking hands on the way through, giving what we needed to um, neutralize his face angle. Obviously with a driver, we said, right, well, do you know what? Give it a go. Um, and then from that, let's see what happens. Because even the, the best coaches in the world that cost Wait, that's a spider. I'm not very happy. I won't kill him, so I don't I don't like killing things, but no webs please. Um yeah, so when it comes to the wrist angles wanting to be employed with the iron, didn't work with the driver just kept the shots out to the right like massively right but the face angle was different yeah so we saw there was an increase in loft yes uh with the iron um but there wasn't as such that was so i'll give you an idea right so when i was to hit a normal drive yeah we're looking i'm looking around about um oh, i haven't hit oh this is gonna be interesting i haven't hit a shot yet with well apart from the ones you saw that's a pretty decent effort to start with bit toey but you take it um as you can see very slow on the speed as i what am i hang on what's the speed 106 well that's not too bad for i haven't done anything so i'll take that anyway slightly toey as you can see need to warm up but um my um impact loft there you go 19.1 Yep, 19.1 degrees. I'm looking for my impact loft to be, or dynamic loft, the dynamic loft of the head. Now I have got this set to about eight and a half degrees because I do hit up on the golf ball. I am attack angle 5.6 degrees up and I obviously, yeah, add loft, can't help it. Because when you're talking about how the arc works, unless you change your arc, didn't mean to hit the golf ball, but as you change the arc, or manipulate the arc, yes, you can have a difference to your attack angle and your dynamic loft delivered. I won't bore you with what. However, he was using a completely different wrist angle when it came to his driver, and also we found out in his three wood. Um, we had to employ a little bit of flexion, the old DJ. So we got up into the old camera, we have footage as you go up to the top, and he was massively and if you can see from that camera, you can't, but he was massively like cupped. He had a huge angle 
there, yeah? So you get different angles like this, flexion and extension. So he was extended hugely, so he had a massive cup. So if you imagine, if you were to, I did this a lot when I was, um, when I was coaching full time, <coughs> excuse me, YouTube cough. Um, there we go, I'll grab a pen. I like to grab a pencil, really, if I can, but I mean, I, I, you have what you got. You've got what you got, sorry. Um, I'd put it in people's gloves or underneath their watches, yeah? So if you have extension, you'd basically stab yourself. You could do it with a board compass, or not a board compass, but a normal compass. That will give yourself a little bit of a, yeah, that might be a little bit over, over the top, but you get the idea. If you have a flat wrist and you have a pencil, you could run it all the way down your glove and your watch and you wouldn't stab yourself. As soon as you start getting flexion, or, um, sorry, extension, you then start, yeah, that's right. He had loads of that. By having loads of that, he was adding a boatload of open face and also a boatload of, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll do one. See if I can do this. This is not the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, not the easiest thing in the world. There you go. I didn't realize there was palm trees over there. Oh, we've got something there, there we go. Oh, they got play it from where it lies. <laughs> right, good example. Right, okay, so strike weren't that bad. It was a single digit miss. Um, however, club path was three across. Face a path, that's a fair few open. 17.6 of them. And so impact loft was 29, loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of loft. Loads and loads of open face. This ball starting right, going right, it's horrific. And to a point of where obviously you hit shots like that, you don't use your driver anymore because this will get you in trouble. So what we did um, after finding out that the handshake that we used to fix his seven iron was having no effect whatsoever on the big dog. We had to employ something different, because if not, there's, well, what's the defini def bleh, definition of insanity? Repeating the same action over and over and over again with the thought that you're gonna get a different result. <laughs> so, when we got to the top, we're in transition. We were thinking about trying to flatten out this wrist. So from this point here, you can see there, he was like this, very much so cupped. We wanna get him more like that. Now, I'm not expecting him to get that. I'm not saying go full on DJ and do some serious flexion going on with the wrists. Yeah, we're not gonna get into that stage. But from being here, yeah, we need it flattened off. And if we can flatten off, that's a huge difference what it will have to the face. Now, yeah, once he was starting to think about this, he was thinking about trying to get this going on. We, we saw some dramatic changes straight away. Slightly high toe, but a shut face. <laughs> 2.3 degrees shut and a slightly high toe. A slightly high toe is given a little bit more of the uh, curvature than just the 2.3, but it shows the point. 2.3 closed, yeah, so you can see in the bottom there. Top tile, middle of the tiles, 2.3 closed the path. Um, impact loft, 16.1. And the more he did it, the more he got to an understanding of he can change one wrist angle and it not only changes his face angle, but it also changes his impact loft. And of course, getting him to feel that we're doing this is a bit wacko. And it would, for me, the, the ball's always gonna go uh, left massively when I do this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Example of. If I really get that wrist angle going, Slightly low on the on the face, yes, but look, club path is 0.1, face to path is seven shut, 6.8 closed, impact loft, dynamic loft, 12.2 degrees. So you can see by using that wrist angle, it has a huge effect on those two things. Now, the interesting thing that we did find by using that wrist angle, because with his uh, normal swing, he wants to come over the top a little bit, he wants to get to this thing more than anything else, he wants to stand the shaft up. By using that wrist angle, yeah, we flatten off the head path relative to the hands, which then gets rid of that out to in path as well. So how many birds you can do with one stone kind of idea, but it makes a huge difference. Now, of course, you cannot play with that shot shape. That shot shape is so ridiculously left, you can play with it. But the whole idea is for him is to change his shots that we hit first of all, so far right that we were out of the foresight range, 
um, getting to a point of understanding what that wrist angle feels like and what the wrist angle does. Then it's just a case of playing with it, as in a case of not playing with it, physically playing, practicing with it, to find out how much wrist angle he needs to get a desired result. The fact that he's learned that our wrist angle does something has changed now something like this where he could never use ever because that's just going so far out of bounds it's ridiculous to now something that he can actually now practice with to use as a weapon rather than a um well a, a sh bullet in the foot shoot yourself in the foot kind of idea there you go so that's what we did with his wood i'll take my glove off now and retire so back to my chair of doom before i do my back in because i haven't warmed up <laughs> right let's go check the comments so I don't want to be on massively long today I will be honest because um, it is my birthday and I even though I've been fairly busy doing normal stuff today um, yeah so right here we go here we go here we go um, happy birthday cheers from golf addict but he did then put in that number so um, yeah <laughs> golf addict has had another go right um, <laughs> So, um, da, 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 where are we? Um, Fenrika has said, not a day over 40. I agree. That's what I look, so we, we are going, <laughs> there's two things. One, what age do I look? And yeah, um, the other one is how old do we think I really am? Uh, Don says 38. Abs uh, Golf Addis has another go, instead of 42. Abstract AV is late to the party. Is in Lanzarote, and it's good to see you, pal. Um, well, in that case, welcome from Lanzarote. Um, a friend from Foresight Sports, who obviously do the quads and stuff, he was in Lanzarote last week, this family, and I believe he had a great time. So if you're having as much fun as he looked like he was having, I'm glad you, um, yeah. Forgot, for, forgot, happy birthday. That's right, Avi. Absolutely, thank you very much. It, we, it, golf. 24 7 365 can't get away from it right and neil says let's cut it at one hour so you can see your family oh well that's, yeah i probably will do what's well within reason oh I, I might give it i might give it an hour and a half because obviously what i've gone through there is quite a bit of information you look about 34 but i think it's around 42 um so why well, i see that's been very kind after your first initial 45 um <laughs> So, although I do moan a lot when it comes to my uh, videos about being old, um, but I suppose, I mean, if I, my brain still thinks that I'm 20. Um, okay. The, I uh, know I won't say, because this will technically give it away if I then, do, if I say what I'm going to say there, so I can't say it. Um, we're not, well, I will give it away right at the very end. Um, thank you. <laughs> but I'm still at the top there. We've got um, Niels and um that have a cake <laughs> yeah i know i'm very good um i love cheesecake I, I love cheesecake cheesecake's lovely um and i used to be able to eat a load of them when i was um younger but now i do have to be wary of what i eat because after the age of, after the age of 20 21 that your metabolism slows down by one percent per year so by the time you're 70 that's 50 percent gone you don't have to um eat much but there you go or just move more there you go so um that's what we did with the wood fix and it also translated when it comes to so initially i thought right let's call him um what's call him what could we call him garrett there we go right garrett um so <laughs> double layer cheesecake for you thanks very much cold fat Appreciate it. Abstract AV, I think I'm 20, but just turned 40 and regularly get beat by a 65 year old, so maybe there's hope. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, the great thing with golf is you can play it at a ridiculously old, I mean, I, I've taught um, people in their 80s and um, it's an interest. yeah, I mean, it is an interesting thing because being honest, when it comes to people, I've got one guy and I'm pretty certain he won't mind me um, saying his name, Colin Durston. He's a lovely guy. He really is a lovely guy. And he's, he is in his 80s, but you would never know 
as in the case of he walks, he's slim, um, he's very young for his age. Um, and I've had a few sessions with him over the years and to a point he's come to see me and say, right Jay, YTD time, you should drink. Been around fiberglass today and my throat. <clears throat> but, um, and he was, he's been a, a few times and he said, look Jay, um, can I try the new drivers and see if we can squeeze some more distance? Now, I know Colin's swing and Colin is, for his speed, bear in mind he's 80 odd years old, his strike is really good. His path and face to path is really good. His, his control of loft is pretty good. It is really good and well within a point of where you can tweak it with some custom fitting, but that's it. But he's already got a custom fit head of which I custom fit him for, I think. So it's one of those ones where after a while, you just have to be honest with him. You say, Cole, look, you just got to swing faster. If you want more distance, you've just got to swing faster, but you can't. Unless of an individual, I suppose at 80 something odd years old, you're not going to go down the gym and start to try and get the speed up or get the swell speed sticks in a garden and you're not. So there's a lot of people can, but the most, that's probably the most um, disappointing time I have as an individual when it comes to coaching was be to telling people that, that you're doing things really well. You just don't swing fast enough. And that's quite, especially at certain times of their life, it's quite, um, yeah, it's, it's disappointing because obviously they can't really do much about that. And time is a predator that stalks us all. So, and every single time the years go on for me, my 92, 93 miles now, the seven iron, which is my standard amount when I'm warmed up, just becomes harder to, to attain and continue as the years go on. Now, when I was 17, I could just get out of the car and just string at 110, 113 with the driver easy. Nowadays, I have to warm the old bones up a little bit more. Uh, Fenrika says, um, Q, question, um, is the flexion in the wrist mainly a driver thing? Uh, for him, for Garrett, we'll call him. His name's not Garrett, but we'll call him Garrett. Um, uh, no. So, uh, sorry, for him, yes. For generalised, no. It, it's whatever works with, with for, for anybody. But when it comes to him, the seven iron swing fix that we employed to get that face to path working and also the loft under control, um, and also to byproduct effect path as well. It didn't work with a handshake. Just didn't work. We tried it three, four, five, six, seven times. That's not happening. So rather than going down the route, continuously over down the same where it's work for your seven iron, it's gonna work for your driver, it's work for your seven iron, it's gonna work for your driver, just keep practicing, it's gonna work for your No, let, let's because people aren't like that. So if you if you're just gonna go down the same cul-de-sac, you're gonna be there all day. And the poor old client is gonna be like severely not happy paying for a session getting obviously a lesson because he wants to learn and the coach is basically saying to do something which you may not know at the time but the coach should know this is a one-way street to a dead end so this is not a good idea so you have to at one point be prepared to come back out of that route turn to a different way and disappear down that one because there are many many routes if you think uh, golf tuition is like Google Maps. If you want to get a, to a point A, point B, right? There we go, in the camera. Uh, so you want to get point A, point B. In Google Maps, obviously you've got via motorways, you've got via A roads, you've got via B roads, you've got scenic routes and stuff like that. And now it's effectively the same thing when, when it comes to coaching. Now, it's great if every single individual uh, learns the quickest way, A to B, boom, down a motorway, or highway, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but some people aren't like that. So you have to go, okay, so we've got to steer clear of the motorways. Um, may take a little bit longer, or it's a different feeling, but we'll go via the A routes, or the A roads. And if you don't do that, but that's the problem. You go down there, you're going down a motorway, it's, it's literally just traffic all the way. You're not moving, but you keep on that road. No, no, we're not gonna go off the, no, we're not gonna go down that route, that slip road. No, we're not gonna go down the A routes. No, I'm staying on this motorway it's not good for learning. So yeah, we used two different thought processes. One for the woods, um, and then one definitely for the irons. Um, 
again, you can't learn every single thing in one session. You can learn the feelings and the understandings of why those feelings need to be used or the, the muscles in wrist angles, uh, what, what kind of uh, ideas and thought processes and feelings you need, but then it's then down to the individual to practice it. So a lesson will not make you better. What it will do, hopefully, is giving you the information that you require to go out there, <laughs> excuse me, YouTube when he pops, um, go out there and practice the heck out of it to understand for yourself the feeling of what you need to make that golf ball do what you want it to do. Before you come into the lesson, you ain't got a clue. It just keeps going that way, mate. It just keeps on going that way. I don't know what's going on, but it keeps on going that way. That's what you learn in a lesson. You understand why, how to fix it. Got the idea, got the feeling. Yes, there we go. Demonstrate enough times that you do understand what that feeling means. Go out and practice it. That's the idea. Um, but, 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 so yes, when it comes to Fenrika, I would say the cue is the flexion and the wrist mania driver thing for him, yes. But for other people, you can have the exact same in the iron. Um, right, so uh, I've got the double layer cheesecake, liking that. Abstract I think I'm 20, just yeah, I've got that one already. And goal for that is I'm 58, feel like 70, act like 18. <laughs> I'm all over the place. <laughs> Golf game is still getting better. My attention span is squirrel. <laughs> You're a funny, funny man. I like it. You are funny. So I'm just looking at the time. I'm keeping an eye on it today because, oh, I've done 13,000 steps today. There you go. <laughs> took the dog for a walk. Well, me and the wife took the dog for a walk, actually. Um, and uh, Barley decided, that's the name of our um, golden Labrador. Daft dog, that thing is. Um, wanted to chase some ducks. So it ran into a, well, I suppose it's a lake. <laughs> Started swimming in after these ducks, thinking they could catch the ducks. Ducks were thinking, <laughs> you're on my surface now. <laughs> no chance. Barley come back, absolutely soaking. Thanks dog, you better get dry before you get in that car. Uh, right, yeah, so I've done a few steps today anyway, um, but yeah. Right, so there's me talking a little bit of things going on when it comes to my personal life. So, um, we're gonna have a few minutes of such of Q and A, unless you want me to, um, I'll raise my 38 with one could be 39. Well, I'm not gonna say yes until someone gets the number. Um, thanks, Jay, for the explanation. No problem, friend, you can get any time. Thank you very much for popping on. It's always nice to have people contribute to the chat a -roo. Um, uh, Don's basically, hang on a minute. No, that, that, Don, you can't do that. that. That is what we call in the game cheating. Um, <laughs> It's not the way to do it. <laughs> I like your um, I like your thought process, but you can't do that. It's not, yeah. Um, 13,000, pretty impressive. Uh, pretty impressive for me, I must say. Um, right, so, okay, so we've had a winner. We've had a winners. Now, because Abstract AV, unfortunately now, you've just lost that. <laughs> you should have been like properly in there and, and being, absolute with your first choice but then you've upped it to 45 and now the sole winner is Fenrika. I am 44 today. 44, Don stopped at 43. I was trying to get in there before he uh, kept on doing it because it's cheating. But yeah, I am 44 today. Um, six more years to go and it's the big 5-0. I do not feel Oh, no, that's, that's a lie. Sometimes when I'm warming up, I do feel my age. Absolutely. Um, damn it, I know. Um, although, I'll be honest, Don, I wouldn't have, if you'd have, if you'd have kept typing and gone 44, I wouldn't have, because it's that's, no. Um, I must admit, so, abstract AV, abstract, have you done? No, you haven't, you've had a go. You did have a go, and then straight away, you changed it to 45. Um, so the winner, it's Fenrika. <laughs> Whereabouts in the world are you, Fenrika? Uh, 22 younger than me. Well, hey, I feel much, much, much older sometimes than I actually am. 50 is the new 30s. 
<laughs> Hello, Peter. How, how are you? Um, happy birthday. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. A 50s is the new 30s. Um, I wish they could do that medically as well, because they do say that your body starts to, um, well, fall to pieces after the age of 40. I do agree to a certain extent. Um, although, yeah, I don't know. It might be... Um, I, I just, I have had a, not a very hard life, I haven't had a very hard life, but I've had a very manual life, as in the case of um, Franrika, I'm in Lancashire, UK. Well, do you know what? Um, Don, <laughs> he's gone, thank you very much. He's popped in a five, uh, five year and 99 um, donation. Thank you very much for my happy birthday wish, birthday gift, thank you, Don. Appreciate it very much, I really do. It's very kind of you. Uh, so, Fenrika, yeah, next time I'm up in Lancashire, um, I'll find a way to get in contact with you. And uh, we'll find a way of, I don't know, giving you a dozen golf balls or something silly like that for winning. <laughs> well done. Um, but yeah, so, what's time? Now we've still got a little bit of time, so come on. Um, anyone want to put in there any questions, I can go through. I'll tell you what I'll do, is I'll transition over here. Because I haven't hit shots um, in, in a long while, in a very, very, very long while. Um, because I've been so busy um, at home doing stuff, um, in en suites, tiling en suites, um, showers in, toilets in, I've got a really, really frustrating story, um, not golf related, if um, people really wanna know. Um, Ken, Ken's in the house. Three birthday cakes, thank you. Um, I'm trying to, I'm not on a diet, but I've gotta be thinking about, yeah, at one point. <laughs> so, core dear me mate, this is where I get the, body's got to move. Now, what I was going to do, I was going to do a live stream last next next week, might be doing it. Um, yeah, what was the frustration? Okay, there is an exercise you'd recommend for legs to help with stability. Um, well, actually, it's an interesting one on that one, abstract, because stability, when obviously you got like those things, and you can do those. Cool, I'll tell you what, I've got an achy glute. Yeah, everyone knows what an achy glute means. Uh, I activated my glutes too much on Saturday because it was um, my little boy, or not so little boy, Cam's um, birthday. He's 11 now. Everyone's getting older. Um, and uh, we went laser tag, you know, the gun thing, laser, do, do, and wear a little suit. If they, yeah. All these little kids around and stuff. God, oh, dear, screaming anyway. Um, and I found myself a little place to hide where I could actually get this way and shoot people there and I could go over there and shoot that way and then, yeah. And of course, I spent the whole game basically doing this and I'm basically just like shifting from one side to the other, activating the glutes. I'm getting too old to activate my glutes. Um, we'll be your psychologist, bring it on. <laughs> yep, know that muscle. So the frustration was, okay. Um, everything finished off in the ensuite, basically. So it's all literally just a case of um, from some final little bits. Oh, that's such a poor shot to start with. Oh, there we go. Um, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna say. So tower rail electricity, because it's a electrical tower rail, not a, um, a, what's it called, a dual fuel, so central heating and electric, just electric, because it's just in the ensuite. Got the toilet in, um, working, so screwed that down. And, was like, and I had a mate, Alex, um, help me out as well. So thank you very much for Alex. Um, so when it comes to the shower, got all that shower in, got the sink unit and all that lot, everything was done anyway. And then I come to connect the power to the uh, tower rail, which when the original bathroom was there, which I absolutely completely tore out, absolutely tore out, floor was up, walls were basically down back to um, plasterboard and stud work in some cases. There was the water cylinder, the hot water cylinder up in the bathroom in the uh, cupboard. So they had the immersion. So I basically reappropriated that wire that run the immersion back through the floor into the ensuite area and that was gonna be my power for the tower rail. Little did I know that 
somehow, we don't know, and it's irrelevant anyway, it doesn't matter whose fault it was, because there's no such thing as fault, it doesn't really matter, that um, I think a screw has gone through the wire at one point and rendered that wire absolutely useless, and now it's finished. So, or well, basically finished. So I'm now trying to work out how I'm gonna get a wire to the tower rail and it's not the easiest of places to get it to over so there we go here we go alex hello mate um yeah <laughs> say hello um so yeah it's a bit of a frustrating but it doesn't matter it's one of those things it happens um it's fine so i'm 58 i actually hit a 290 yard drive today was tickled pink, which I did that all the time. My average is 245, 245, 245. In my out 30s, averaged average over 290, 210, missed those days. Yeah, I know, I missed them days as well. Getting older is very humbling. Throw me under the bus. No, I didn't. Alex, I tell you what, you're a, a blooming, I won't swear when it comes to, um, oh, camera focus. Um, I won't swear when it comes to YouTube, I won't do that. Uh, but you're a blooming good plumber. Exceptionally, exceptionally neat. Um, exceptionally neat what a strike that was so what i've got to do strike improve 2.4 open i'm still nowhere near speed yet um face is getting a little bit better as i warm up but uh wrong ball actually i just noticed the wrong we're using the wrong balls okay that's a bit better now just got to get strike on <coughs> excuse me youtube cough um but no, so yeah, and it was just so, it, that's the way it goes. Um, considering that's the only thing out of the whole, within reason, out of the whole entire thing, the only thing that has gone wrong, really, uh, as in like an unforeseen, oh no, uh, is that. So it's fine, it's one of those things. It's just now I have an interesting uh, time trying to route a wire through somewhere where and i won't describe exactly how the situation is but i've got a loft space the other side of it it's a single story loft space and this is obviously the second story uh ensuite and so i'm in the loft space of the first story bit on the other side of the wall i'm thinking about can i get a drill through diagonally up anyway i'll do it definitely will <laughs> um Oh, thank you very kindly. You are very kind, sir. That's very, very nice of you. £4.99 donation from Abstract AV. That was very kind of you. Yeah, still a little bit to do on face. There's a fraction more. Yep, yeah, 0.8 open. And a bit more speed as well. 89.9 miles an hour. Or what is it exactly? 89.89 miles an hour. See, this is what I love about fsx play and even the fsx pro it gives you information so much that you'd you would never need know that 89.89 <laughs> the gc3 actually does um to the point zero one now that is when, when i'm trying to get zero zero that is very very uh, addictive absolutely addictive oh open as soon as I hit that, I knew it was open. 1.2? Oh, 1.4, I just saw that. So this is how you get, um, oh, so it's 1.3 something and it rounded differently. Doesn't matter. Um, so this is how you get better when it comes to utilizing um, your feeling, your idea of what you're doing against then measured information. You can see, like, properly live, what I'm doing Oh, that's horrific. That's high toe. <laughs> or oh, 88.7. So that's now what I normally do when I feel like I've got within reason, I've got half okay control over, over path first and then face dynamics. I'm now starting to get a bit better. Um, I now start upping the speed up a little bit to see if I can get the body moving. Um, we've got Neil saying you need to start diagonally from the ensuite down not diagonally up to ensure the ensuite proper entry point where it counts. Yes, absolutely, Nils. You are a very, very bright individual because you are very imaginative and you see it in your head. And that's the exact point because the problem I've got, I need to go from the ensuite into like that because obviously I've got, there's one, there's one certain part where I've actually not 
tiled it. It's right at the bottom where there was a waste pipe because that's gonna be boxed in because you don't wanna see waste pipes. So yeah, that's the whole idea. So I have got a bit of access, about 100 mil from the floor up. The problem I've got is the toilet is in the way. So I can't then get a long drill bit at a diagonal. Yeah, which is fun. But yeah, very, very good uh, thought out point. Right, so add speed a bit. So this is where you, my strike will suffer, don't care. Because what I need to do is I need my body working first in synchronization to then up the ante a little bit. So strike will suffer a little bit. There you go, goes a little bit, but speed's now 91.61. 92 miles an hour to um, the people who don't care about points. Suffer from strike, absolutely. But delivery dynamics are still okay. 92.5 miles an hour. So you can see, I'm dialing it up a little bit. Um, Golf, your thoughts on the new Garmin S70 Golf Watch? Very nice. It is. I just don't like them because it's a GPS unit and GPS are okay, but they are inherently inaccurate because, excuse me, YouTube when he pops. Now, when it comes to anyone who's driven a car, with GPS, and it's telling you to go a certain direction, and I've seen this on the golf course as well, but this is the best way to um, describe it. And it says you need to go up onto the slip road, come off there, but you look at the slip road when you're on the motorway and you go, wow, it's really busy up there. I'll go to the next one, come off at the next one, go back, whatever it be. And you're driving still on the motorway, yet I'm not gonna say the manufacturer, um, Ron Ron, or, or Bar, Barmin, there you go, I didn't say the name, but you know what I mean. Those ones, uh, and, and they see you going up the slip, board and I'm, uh, slip road, and I'm thinking, nope, I'm definitely on the motorway still. And then it goes, oh, oh, no, you're not there, are you? And it zips you back on. Obviously, it's picking up certain things and it can be within a certain amount. And I don't like how there is a distinct difference sometimes between the, um, the range of understanding of how accurate that thing is and if I've noticed that to be six yards out, but that can be plus or minus, and for me, that's a club. And I can't afford to be a club out. And so I use laser because I can determine what I want to do, when I want to do with, but I mean, for the vast majority of people, absolutely. GPS watches are fine, absolutely fine. And they're great, they're a great little piece of kit. They're on your watch anyway. You haven't got to get your laser rangefinder out. So still trying to dial speed up. Had a little break having a chat. But there we go. I'll tell you what, give me an idea, right? Oh my word, see? Right, this isn't the old ball. Reason, uh, there we go. That's the old Mizuno ball, the old one. Yeah, still got a few dangling around. Um, shall I get a new one? See if I can get a new one, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, is that a new one? That's not a new one at all, but it's an old. It's a new, new old one. Is that okay to use still? <sighs> yeah. So different, di different, di di see. Look at the. It's to come from the mat. That uh, different dimple pattern, as in the bigger dimples, and, and yeah. So. That's got 160 yards carry, 164 on quads. We're talking about bar barometrics. This is not running barometrics at the moment, quad is, because it's warmer in here. Um, Alex, hello Alex, hope, hope you're doing. Howdy Jay. Um, Niels is also, here we go, we've got, um, John says, hi, apologies for late joining. Absolutely fine, John, no problem whatsoever. Niels says, remove and remount toilet. Toilet could be relatively simple, albeit annoying to have to cork again. Well, yeah, I could do, that's true. I don't know, I need to have a think. <laughs> Blooming things drive me insane, it's fine. Right, so that's spinning at 7.3. This is the difference, so this is not an online test between golf balls for no whatsoever. Um, look at the data, you've got the data on there, so 91.87 miles an hour, attack angle three degrees down, 1.5 across, 0.7 open, little baby fade. Um, 30 degrees of impact loft, most importantly, look at the spin. 7,333 of those lovelies. Now, I've, that's the old ball. Now, I've got the new ball here, and let's see how this one works. Oh, Matt, that is in my eye. 
face fractionally open. Face fractionally open. What's that one? 7,000. So we dropped 330, 300, yeah, 300 and, well, 298, 289, whatever. And we was at 300 RPM. We took 300 RPM. Did I add more loft that time or not? I don't know. It felt slightly different strike. 2.7 degrees, so I was less down. So that'll increase spin. That's toey. But speed's around about 91 at the moment. So I would take that. It's fine. 91 miles an hour, I would take it. So I don't need to push speed anymore. Yeah, 1.8 open. So that's interesting to get it to spin the same as, as the old golf ball. I've got to leave my face nearly two degrees open. That is interesting. That's slightly toey. Boring, but toey. So I, what I normally would do is I would normally put barometrics on here so you can actually um, show exactly the same what it says on quad. All the information on quad is exactly the same, it's just the uh, carry distance, et cetera, slightly different because of the, uh, was three yards in it, 161 to 158.3. Not much, but yeah. So where on the old ball, I struggle to get the old ball under 7,000. Um, this one, I can quite easily get it. Um, under 7,000. An interesting thing, this is an old-ish ball. I've used this quite a few times, this one here. Um, right here, another one. Open face. <laughs> Felt that as soon as I hit it. But, yeah, three degrees open, saw that. So what I'm gonna do now, um, I've got a few more minutes. Everyone's still, uh, uh, I'm just dropping in quickly to wish you a very happy birthday, mate. Thank you very, very much. Um, Kieran, very much so appreciated. So I'm just gonna set this green to around about 159. Because bear in mind, um, we are talking about the difference between what quad is saying, because of barometrics, it's warmer in here. Uh, I need to take the top off soon, um, against what it would be under quad's normal cool condition. Uh, so we got Martin Reeves. How are you doing, Jay? Long time no see. Monday nights not great for me. Sorry, Mark. I do apologise, but um, if we, I don't mind if if any other person has any other days where if we say we want to move this because more people will want to join in on a Tuesday or whatever. I don't mind at all. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. Running a slightly different day. Slight miss hit, but it's boring. So now I've got something to work, strike wards as in I'm aiming at, rather than just blaring nothing, just no space of nothingness. Um, pretty decent numbers, slightly vertically low, but then again, that's my miss. I hit it slightly low on the face if I'm gonna miss. Uh, any other ones? No, that's cool. Um, I'm still thinking about my challenge with electrical cable. <laughs> but so that's 5.1 yards left. And what was the distance on that one? I didn't see, I can't remember, about 160, 166 total. So I need to bring it, uh, bring it back a bit. So, excuse me. Normally, if I was doing this under normal conditions, seven iron goes for around about 165 anyway, 166. So, but if I was gonna run it, I would say normally, oh, I can't do it there. I have to do it there and then bring it to 165. 165.1, there you go. Um, I'd normally, I average around about that. I'll go slightly further on a really good shot and I'll go slightly shorter on a um, not such a good shot. Open face slightly, that's gonna be right hand side of green. It should be slightly short, but it's pretty good. Yeah, that's fine. That's what I would see as a generalized miss. It's slightly low on the face and it's slightly open. Here you go, yeah, 2.7 degrees open and 7.5 mil low. So that's my classic miss. That's what I'm gonna be hitting a lot when it comes to me understanding good shot, good shot, miss, miss, good shot, good shot, good shot, miss, that kind of idea. But as long as you know your pattern, that's fine. That's no worries whatsoever. This is probably the most shots I've hit in a long while because I've been busy. 
That's a really nice one. It's going to be fractionally right of pin and it might be a fraction long after everything's done. Oh, fraction long. What was it? No, fraction short. 64.8 to 65.1. I was 0.3 of a yard short. Um, but again, you can see that my face is fractionally open. It cut a little bit too much. It's fine. I mean, I won't moan. 38.4 yards in the air. It's doing good. I mean, what have I got in my hands here? JPX 923 Tor. There you go. <laughs> so what I've got in my hands, it feels nice. It feels like my blades, to be fair, because it will do, because it's got copper. Underlay, any other questions? We have Mr. Much is here. Hi Jay, good to be logging in again. Been away for a few weeks and sorry about the late join. Absolutely fine, Gary. I won't be here for much longer though because it is my birthday and um, I still wanted to pop on, um, talk about the topic of what this was for today, which is an interesting one, and the two different ways that we fixed the, not the problem, but we fixed um, the swing issue and now i'm literally just sort of hitting some shots doing a bit of practice and catching people's um questions if they have any that's left it's okay but it's left i'm getting slow down now you can probably see on the cat on the uh, camera because my pc is having to do 4k graphics and also streaming at the same time. <laughs> Poor old thing. Um, but yeah, was that 91.5 miles an hour, 9.53. Um, oh, happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is, oh, happy birthday for me. Uh, it's been a good day. It's not been a bad day whatsoever. Um, so you can see, yeah, again, face dynamics being the best. Again, I'm just fairly boring generally with how I do things, but you know, if you've been watching me for a while. Poor strike. It's gonna be short, slightly low, slightly toe. More low than toe. Um, yeah, 8.6 low, 5.9. So that's my miss. When we remember what I was saying just a little while ago. Good shot, good shot, miss, good shot, we hit that kind of idea. But I know my pattern. My pattern will be slightly low, uh, slightly short right when it comes to a seven iron because my miss is such that that's how it will work. Um, I can change the miss, but I'd rather not because I, I know it. So that's my hit like ridiculously well. I'd be really happy with that gone too far because of it's been hit really really well um still five mil toe see uh one point uh, one degree from the inside 0.2 closed blah 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 a good shot i would be taking that one all day long but spin you see i'm um, this is about 500 rpm or so less than the old ball um and if you go by the x version of the old ball have i got an x version of the old ball around here somewhere uh, yeah. This might be a bit more spinny. Um, this is the X version of the old ball. Uh, this will spin up most probably. Oh, I munched it. That's actually given it its most opportunity to not spin. Cool, look at that. <laughs> well, spins up at 7.3 straight away. And that was with a high strike. What is this gonna be like when you um, hit it, yeah, slightly low on the face and also the face slightly open as my, as my kind of miss. Middle is gonna be spinny, but okay. Like that one, there you go. 2.6 open, but good strike. Maybe a fraction low. Look at, the, look at the distance that comes off. Even my other ones with the old ball still reach the green. This did not. Wow, look at that. That shows you the difference between the Mizuno golf balls from last time to now in that alone. Um, I've hit a face open by two and a half before now um, as a miss because my, I'm normally fairly straight but my miss, if I'm gonna miss, is slightly to the right and is slightly shorter because of that slightly low strike that I generalized, generally have anyway. 
as a mist because it's always better to thin it than fat it with that fractionally open face, so it's a little bit fady, but with that spin increase, look at that, eight, five. Woof, that is a lot of spin. Um, Martin J. Monday was the uh, voted day for your subscribers. Happy day, birthday, mate. Um, YouTube drink, I've got my YouTube drink over there, which I do need to have one. Happy birthday to you, what percentage of weight should you have on your left side impact with a seven iron? Is it more or less depending on the iron you have? All full shots. I say, um, I did some work on force plates. If you've never seen force plates, uh, Mr. Crossfield, um, Mark Crossfield, you, I'm absolutely sure everyone has near enough heard of Mark Crossfield. He's a, um, well, he's the one who basically started YouTube when it comes to golf, within reason. Um, he's the, uh, well, should we say he's the golf of like, YouTube's father when it comes to golf? I don't know that kind of idea but he is he he basically inspired me to start my channel all those years ago because of what he's done and so yeah when it comes to uh, mark he's got force plates those force plates are in the ground he's got the dual ones he's got the expensive ones um because obviously he's uh, his view count is high enough that he earns enough money to be able to spend it on force plates um but it's um, with those dual force plates, I've worked on force plates before to see exactly how my weight distribution is at the swing. Now you'll be able to see how I hit, and as I hit, I'm fairly central. I don't really move a lot of mass over to my right hand side. I haven't got some like weird and wonderful moves or anything else like that, but I do have a push. So I'll fairly say fairly still on the way back, but I have a little push on the way through. That's left. I might grab a left, left, left edge. Try to take spin off the old thing. I'll just go back to the uh, new ball, if you don't mind. I'll keep with that one, thank you. Um, the new ball works so much better. Like that's a left ball, look at that. Face shut, lower loft, slightly toe strike as well, and it's still seven six. Wowzers. But yeah, I will have, um, what at Martin's Reef said, I like Mondays, <laughs> yeah. Um, is that I have, I think it was 80% of, 85%, sorry, of weight on my left foot at the point of contact. So at impact, I have a load, a load. I have hardly any weight uh, on my trail leg. Decent, turning a little bit, but it's gonna be the full distance. This is a very small green, by the way, <laughs> have you had? But that's the foresight range. Um, it's a tiny, tiny green. Um, just good, but spin there, there you go, six, five. The difference is crazy. That is mental. The difference alone when it comes to ball. Yep. Um, so yeah, when it comes to force plates, that's the whole idea you should be, if I would have force plates, it would be a lot easier for, especially when I was teaching full time to coach much more effectively, because the amount of people that I saw do this, they set up pretty okay and they would do this. And they go, ah, I hit decent shots. They just don't go very far. Well, that's a prime example. Let's go have a look at that one, shall we? Well, strike was a bit poo. Well, yeah, I do strike a bit poorly from time to time. But do you realize that you swing up at 2.7 degrees? What does that mean? And you have a chat and you say, well, do you know your, your impact loft, your dynamic loft is 34 degrees? Uh, I don't know, what does that mean? And you have to go through all the terms and stuff like that. Well, when I'm hitting shots, I'm looking at trying to um, de-loft a golf club by a, about the same amount as I'm angle of attack. So this is a 34 degree head within reason. And let's go have a little hit with this one again. Little face open. I reckon I might get away with it because it's a fraction toe on the strike. Oh no, face closed, there you go. Shows how much I know, 0.7, it's not much. It's just what I feel. Um, slightly toey strike, yeah, 7.6 mil toe. Anyway, um, 28.7 degrees, four, is it four dead? Yeah, four dead. So 29 degrees, add four is 33. Within reason, I'm one degree out of my arc, which means I am handle dragging one degree. That's not a lot. So. But what these people are doing is, and you see it all the time, is the fact that they come in, setup's pretty good, and they have their backswing, they, they go on their, on their back foot, they stay on their back foot, and they try and they, they hit it up like this. 
So can I make a half decent swing at it doing this way? Nope. <laughs> That's a prime example of example what they do though. Thinned it. Well, what do you expect? I was 4.8 up. Dynamics weren't bad, it was gonna be a fade, but that's no surprise because I'm so far on my trail side. Um, but 38.4 degrees of dynamic loft and I thinned it. Absolutely thinned it. Why? Because if I'm being like this and I'm moving my mass, so ball's in the middle, yeah? Sternum, this is gonna be my low point within reason as you've got some very weird length arms, but let's just say you're not built weird. You've got, yeah. Um, so where you move your low point, and how you keep it there, or how you move it, how you start with it or not. If you just literally just turn your body and you don't move your low point whatsoever, by the time you get down to the golf ball, okay, in true terms, because of centrifugal force, everything straightens out slightly, you're still gonna hit the ground. So you do need that push a little bit to get that ball floor contact, yes we do. But it's the people which go back and then stay there, they ground out early. If they don't ground out early, they do what I just did there. They come up and thin the living daylights out of it. And they wonder why they're swinging 86 miles an hour, get nothing out for it. Uh, Lee, thoughts about closed versus open alignment? Hello, I am late. I'm finding out about slices. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, open closed stance. Now, when it comes to a driver, I employ a slightly closed stance because I, within reason, if I'm going to swing normally when it comes to a 7-iron, ball fairly in the middle of the stance. Fraction left. But pretty good. Hitting target, no problem with that. My path was 0, 0 0.8 across, 0 0.9 closed, but 0, 0, within reason. My path is 0 when it comes to 7-iron. That kind of idea. Um, when it comes to driver, by the time because of the arc, because my ball position is so far forward, um, if I was to swing like I normally would do, I aim straight, I'm zero with a ball in the middle. By the time I get to my left foot as such, I'm now hitting up, which is good for the driver, but I'm also exiting left, which is not good for me to hit target. So what I do is I actually, I aim fractionally out to the right, and then I kind of pull, I kind of effectively pull, straight pull everything into target. Because I understand that all I've got to do is marry my face up to my path when my point is at the, uh, clubs at the ball, and the ball just goes straight within reason because I counter that with alignment. Now, does it make a difference? Now, as you can see, my feet are very, very much so, well, should we say, aimed out to the right? Yeah. And within reason, I don't know if I can do it, I did this years ago. Poor strike. Not the easiest thing to do. Um, oh, just on the front edge. Not the easiest thing to swing when your feet are that wacko. However, look at my path. 0 0.1. Um, and that's with my feet massively like that. And then no different is if I have my feet this way. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Ball strike again, but again, I don't do this every day. <laughs> Low on the face, basically. But, where were we? What was my path? 0.4. Yeah, so for me, it makes no difference what I do with my feet. When it comes to my physical path, it makes no difference whatsoever. What will make a difference though, is where I line my shoulders, where I start my shoulder line. So if I was to keep my, my feet fairly straight and then align my shoulders more to the right, yeah, like I did with my feet, but now feet are straight with my shoulders going this way. This presets my arc, my swing direction out to the right. And so for me with an iron, I will get a draw because obviously I'm trying to hit target, but yeah. Path 6.8 from the inside, there you go. And of course I'm hitting tall, trying to hit targets so my face is closing. Um, that's because of my shoulders, not because of my feet. So people talk massively about these little things that you stand on, and they are important, don't get me wrong, they are, but by far the biggest important thing is shoulders. Now, 
Can you do it? I suppose I could manufacture. So if I was aiming straight, shoulders this way to preset that. Face slightly open, slightly low strike. I'm doing something weird and wacko, guys. You have to give me a little bit of, yeah, bear with me. What's my path? 0.5. So I can manufacture a shot because I understand path, regardless of where I have my shoulders, regardless of where I have my feet. But by far the biggest thing for most amateur golfers is not their feet, it's their shoulders. You build your stance around your alignment from your shoulders. Now I do not agree, before anyone starts, I do not agree with people who do this. It's different when you've got someone behind you, like from this way here, doing, do you understand where your shoulders are? Like this kind of idea, yeah. But for someone to say that they're gonna be here, and then by the time they get their hands down, if they don't think that their shoulders have moved a small amount, well, yeah, don't, it's, there's no point. You need to get into a pattern of understanding where you're aiming or whether that is um, with someone, obviously just with feedback telling you, then that's probably the easiest and quickest way. Excuse me. Um, Martin's really good catch. Yeah, I may be uh, 44 years old today. Um, maybe my birthday of 44 years, but I've still got reactions. <laughs> so, even if I'd have dropped it, it would have been from hero to zero in one catch. So yeah, um, what we got? So we've done that, hello, oh, now we're good. So, right, okay, two more minutes, and then we're gonna be, um, we'll go. Unless anyone wants to see me hit some weird and wonderful shots. This is the most shots I've hit in about a month. <laughs> I've been that busy. Oh, that's a poor strike. That is so healy and open. That's what comes of doing some weird and wonderful shots beforehand. <laughs> It's no different when I actually do a, um, a swing change when it comes to a student. I say exactly the same thing. As soon as you change something, or you go from one thing to another, it takes the human brain a certain amount of shots, normally three shots, to get back to tuned in to where you were before, or at least tuned in to the swing change. So if I was working on draws, and I was trying to sort of like working on doing these kind of ideas, Normally, it can take me, until I've started warm up, a good, not bad, um, a good few shots sometimes to dial it in, get an understanding from it. But, and especially when you're demonstrating, this is the hardest thing, especially when you've got a client and you're saying, yeah, but see, what you're doing is, your, your, your issue, your backswing's pretty good, but then what you do in your backswing is you then come over and then you deliver all this weird and wonderful loft. So you're swinging fast enough, but you're not, you've got like efficiency of, well for me it's 1.35 from a half okay hit. A little bit drawy and while well, I was messing around. But these people are coming in and, and having sort of shots where they go. And they hit that shot as a fairly commonplace. Cool, nearly shanked it. Efficiency 0. Point, oh, sorry, 1.08. <laughs> It's like so bad. And you think, well, the amount of wins you can have. There you go, that's a normal swing. That's what they do. And I have had people, no word of a lie, I've had people, as in like double, double digits. What I mean by double digits is double digit club path, double digits face to path, as a common, normal part of their swing. And you think, wow, you've just hit that one fairly well and at 1.25 efficiency at 91 miles an hour and it's gone 145 yards. I mean, I'm not quite sure, I wonder. No, slightly open. Ooh, I'm trying to hit the same number. <laughs> Let's slow my swing down. What was it? Yeah, there you go. Wasn't the quite best of strikes, so I lost efficiency through that. I mean, obviously efficiency is 1.31 because I didn't strike it the greatest because I was slowing my swing uh, down. But 83.88, so that's a good, what, seven, eight miles an hour slower? And I've gone further. That's with a still, not a quite plumb on uh, strike. That's still, that's still toey. That's still toey, low toe. But look at the hat that, 82.66 miles an hour, getting slower and still managing to out carry it. Because my delivery of face to path, even with a poor strike, is still better 
I mean, that's worse strike, look. This is why you get, being in control of your club dynamics is just so, so important. That's nearly 80 miles an hour now, and I'm gonna lose out now. Ooh, I don't know. Go a bit, come on, now we're gonna hold. What was that? 145, still 146 from now and 80 miles an hour swing. So we're now 10 mile an hour short, uh, slower in speed, yet still further in carry because of a better control of club face and path dynamics. Um, right. I think Stefan said message retracted. I don't know what was said <laughs> and if it was important or not, I don't know. Have another go, I don't mind. Um, what's the score with the memberships when you're going to start, mate? So, um, when I, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I've been looking at it in the time that I have had or been able to look at it because I've been busy. Um, but I'm going to do a similar thing to what TXG do because TXG is possibly the closest channel to what I have when it comes to the analytical way and i will be doing a series as soon as uh, this week i hope to get back to filming um, but the first lot of filming i want to do i want to do a film where we have a, like, a little series of understanding the numbers side so anything that is quoted here and stuff like that but the basics of it yes but not just the basics of it the things that are a little bit more intricate so we talk about club path you know what my club path is when it comes to standard, um, if I'm trying to hit a normal shot. But if I play the golf ball from back in my stance, from back near my left foot, and I try and keep my face sort of fairly square. So, here we go, kind of hit target-ish. That was ball further back. <laughs> so, um, what happens? So if I move ball position, just ball position alone, what happens there? I'm looking at the numbers now. Attack angle goes massively down, yeah? Because we're talking about, and I will be doing lots of this when it comes to this, this episode on at attack angle. What affects attack angle? Do this, this, this. But when you do attack angle, this is also affected. So at the end of the series, people should have a better understanding of the 3D delivery. Um, ball move back. Look, club path has now gone 8.8 .8 from the inside. Because of the arc, the arc of the swing, if you understand, so if you see from whatever camera you can look at them, right, you can see from down here, I'm swinging down, but I'm also going out to the right, what you would see out this way, yeah? I'm not, I'm just swinging normally. But there will be an arc in there, and obviously from the other camera, you can see on the way down, I'm hitting down. So the more I hit down, the more out to the right I am, and the more here up, the more on the way. So I, I'm gonna do a video series explaining the simple side, and then getting slightly more in depth and then slightly more in depth as well because we're not and they're not just talking about the path side by simple ball position uh, position change you're talking about attack angle my attack angle there's 9.2 down where you saw from my normal shots i'm around about four when it comes to impact loft dynamic loft that was 19.4 well, you guys normally say i'm about 29 or so degrees so it's made a huge difference just me moving ball position not just path and then obviously, yeah. So I, that's my plan anyway to do that, absolutely. But also when it comes to doing the memberships, um, I'm gonna do a similar thing to what TXG do. So anyone who's a, either a member of TXG or um, does a similar thing, or, or watches their, their content and, and knows of it, then that's what I'll do. So if anyone wants to know what the, um, amount, the uh, memberships will be, have a look at TXGs. I reckon that was going to be fairly similar as to what it will be. Right, last one, and then we're going to be scooting off unless someone's got a, uh, answer, a question for me to answer, sorry. Open face. Can't finish on that one, can you? It's going to hit the green. Was it? Oh, I don't know if it will. That's irritating. That's what I do. I'm frustrated about that. I pride myself on targets that I hit. I mean, okay, that's 11 yards right. That is a miss. So at my level, a double digit miss with a seven iron is a miss. I'm looking for no more than nine yards. Absolutely no more than nine yards, the normal miss. Oh, that's a terrible strike. Good dynamics, terrible strike. There's a little lesson for everybody. 
you have good swing dynamics, good delivery, good path, good face angle, but just miss hit it. That's what club, well, I would say technology, but effectively, yes, club design does for people. If you can give, deliver good um, face and path dynamics, but just miss hit it, you'll get away with it. Right, last one, and I'll go back to the screen. Oh, what a toe shot. <laughs> oh, don't have a break and chat and stop. But that's what you hit from time to time. See, that one there, if I was doing my normal uh, miss hits when I'm like testing stuff, that I'm keeping that. Within reason, face is open by 1.5 degrees with a little bit dim, but look at the strike, 16 mil toe. And you can have a look at the efficiency difference. So, so when I'm trying to hit one off the heel, I'll try and keep my delivery exactly the same, just hit it out the heel. Or like very close to the sh yeah, the hosel rocket. Overclosed. Tried it out the heel, but overclosed. So that I wouldn't take. Not enough out the heel. And slightly too overclosed. So 4.4 mil, not enough. We can do better. We can do better. That one seems pretty good. You take that one as a normal um, capture from a miss. I don't know how, was it double digits? Not quite. Oh, it was, 11.3 mil heel. So yeah, you take that. So I'm trying to hit out the heel and trying to get dynamics as close to normal as I possibly can do to capture what the efficiencies are. That's what I do when it comes to club um, reviews. But I'll, I'll sort that one out there. Too many clubs in that bag. I need a YouTube drink. Right, so unless anyone else. Frugal Fixer, hi Jay, in late was at a garden store. Well, why not? Good excuse. <laughs> as long as you enjoyed yourself, mate, that's all you can help for. Uh, right, so um, unless anyone else has got anything else that I'd like to say, I'm gonna depart and say thank you very much for everyone joining, popping along, saying hello. Um, what's time now? Yeah, getting on for 10 to uh, nine. So I wanna be getting in my, it's my birthday, so I still wanna try and have a tiny little bit of an evening um, before, well, we go to bed and we do it all again tomorrow. <laughs> the pattern continues. So, um, last things on the chat, anything else? No, um, have a nice evening, remaining birthday. Cheers, Neil, no problem whatsoever. And thank you very much again um, for letting me use your Arcos information last week. It was very helpful, thank you very kindly. Arcos, the more I use it, or it doesn't, I'm not picking on Argos, Argos, Arcos um, for being specifically the best one around. No, it's just the one that I've just had recently the most um, input with because of the fact it just, just so happens most people have been speaking about it and it sort of goes around in waves and stuff. They'll talk, they'll talk about something different at a different time. Um, but any form whatsoever um, of you been able to um, uh, what, yeah, I'm just checking the uh, comments. Um, that you can control what you're doing by understanding where your miss patterns are, what your club patterns are, how this works, how that doesn't work. If you've got a golf club, which is either working really well or not working really well, you can assess why, where your misses are when it comes to your green and regulation. Because remember, every single time you hit an extra green on your scorecard, over the what you normally do, that is an average of 1.1 shots you take off your score straight away. So it is. It is very, very important you hit greens. Remember you do have a handicap and your expectation is such that you don't have to hit every single green. Remember when you're going in from a green at 160 yards, regardless of what you see on the PGA Tour, your aim is to get as close as you possibly can do to give you the best chance of getting it up and down. That's the whole idea. Uh, if you hit the green, brilliant. If you understand what your patterns of shot are, then you give yourself a better chance at actually hitting it. You can still have your misses, but at least you have your misses closer to target. But anyway, um, thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. Right, so unless anyone has got other questions, I will say goodbye. Um, thank you very kindly for every single person's kind um, 
uh, contributions that I had, what they've done, uh, happy birthday, <laughs> thank you very much. I just want to go through, see if I can actually uh, click on, there we go. So um, I do want to say thank you to every single person that's donated today. Uh, it's a very, very kind thing they've done. Mr. Mumble, um, five Canadian dollars. Um, we had Niels, thank you very kindly for a happy birthday. Have a cake next time you pass a bakery. Um, your command of English is exceptional. And that was, a, was it 50 Danish krona? DKK. I'm starting to get used to them. Uh, Don was five years, 99. Thank you very, very much. Don, Azure AV, £4.99. Thank you very kindly, considering you're in Lanzarote. That's a very, very kind, and you'd be yeah, having fun rather than watching me. Alex, $9, sorry, 99. Thank you very much, Alex. Much appreciated. Very much so is. And Martin's popped in too with two questions saying about the. Um, Talk about the, obviously the, the what the votes of the subscribers they want is Mondays as a general rule, so that's why I do the live streams on a Monday and also asking about the memberships. So I will basically start the memberships very very similar to what I do with um, that TXG do and. Yeah, that's going to be possibly the best way forward. I think the only difference would be that possibly I may do a monthly live stream when it comes to open for everybody. And then every week that I do live streams will be for only the people of members, I think. Um, because generally speaking, when it comes to a video, a video is very impersonal. I try and get my personalities across the best I can do when it comes to being on camera um, in a video, but it's nowhere near like as interactive as this is. So um, yeah, it's um, it's been fun. Right, so um, well, we got last ones on here. Um, good night, mate. Have a good, great night. Thank you very much. Very much. How's that? Porn, uh, porn as in P-A. WN, great videos, uh, totally sold me on picking up a set of JPX 923 hot metals, cheers fella. I, I don't sell, as in a case of, um, I just basically tell what it is, regardless of what I wear, this is my personal choice, yeah? Everyone has their own personal choice of brand that they like, dislike this brand, like this brand, or whatever it be. Everyone plays golf, generally speaking, in a baseball cap, or some form of cap, and it has, generally speaking, not plain. It has a logo of something. Why? Because they like to wear the hat of whatever it be. And um, so whether that be Adidas or anything else like that, that's your choice. Uh, but it doesn't, as though wearing this stuff and using stuff does, it's my choice. It doesn't affect in any way my bias or non-bias or my uh, impartiality. Um, I am just, if it's good, then they, people need to know it's good. If it's bad, people need to understand why. And all golf clubs have good bits and bad bits. And so that's why I do all my head based stuff so I can actually give um, more uh, analytical uh, goods and bads, pros and cons, rather than just going yay or no, like that, so, right. Um, thank you very much everyone for joining in, it's been a pleasure as always, and we will see everybody, or not see everyone, but we will, yeah, catch up everyone next week. Anyone who wants any specific, um, when it comes to subjects they want a live stream done on, if I get enough, then I will obviously, I might put a post out there and let everyone Put out there, we'll see. Um, but there you go. I've just hit some shots so you can see 58 shots. I've just hit so okay. Some of them are messing around, <laughs> but oh, at least I've had a little bit of a swing because I haven't had well, I haven't swung much at all in the last however long. So, right, thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. And we will see or speak to everyone next week, around about seven, half seven, depending on what's going on. Um, but watch out for the posts because, um, yeah, I always put a post out during the day to find out exactly what time it's going to be for that um, same evening. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for the kind donations. It is very, very welcome. And thank you very, very much for them. It is very much so appreciated. And we'll catch everyone next week.